Hello everybody. So today I want to do an example problem of um, the Rankine cycle. And as we know, the Rankine cycle involves water and uh, it sort of involves some processes and isentropic compression, constant pressure heat addition, isentropic expansion, and constant pressure heat rejection. So um, I have a, a problem here that I want us to go over. If I can actually just find it, okay, I found it. So it says a simple ideal Rankine cycle operates between the pressure limits of 10 kilopascals and 4 megapascals with a, with a turbine inlet temperature of 500 degrees Celsius. The mass fraction of steam that condenses at the turbine exit is what? So they're basically asking for um, quality, right? Now, what I want us to first see, and also I'm going to write this uh, question inside the description, so if you didn't hear what I said. What I want us to first realize is that they gave us two pressures and the inlet temperature, turbine inlet temperature. Now, I know the processes. Um, we first start with an isentropic compression. So that doesn't involve a turbine. That involves a compressor, right? Then we go into the boiler, which is the constant pressure heat addition, right? Cool. The third time is the isentropic expansion, which is obviously done by a turbine. So it says at the inlet of the turbine, which we know has to be at step three. So the inlet temperature, which I'll write as T3, has to be 500 degrees Celsius. And make sure you don't confuse it like, oh, inlet temperature, T1. No, you have to sort of watch what they're saying. So I'm gonna write my T2 here, T1 here, and I'll write T4 here. And I'm gonna also have my P's under them. Now, um, we know that, the, the, that for a Rankine cycle, it only operates between, ideal Rankine cycle, right? Because they told us it's ideal. It only operates between two pressures. Um, I know that my P1 is gonna be my low pressure and my P2 is gonna be my high pressure. Um, you can sort of just think about it. Isentropic compression goes from low pressure to high pressure, right? Cool, so I know that my P1 has to be 10 kilopascals, which they gave us. And then my P2 has to be, I'll write it as 4,000 kilopascals, but it's four megapascals, right? And that's just 4,000 kilopascals. Okay, then let me just write it as four megapascals. Cool. Now, um, what else did they tell us? Okay, I also know, I think that's all the information that they gave us, but I also know that um, my P1 is equal to my P4, and my P2 is equal to my P3. Again, because the Rankine cycle only operates between two pressures, the ideal Rankine cycle, so, um, I can go ahead and say that P3 equals 4 MPa and P4 equals 10 kilopascals. Now, I also know my T1. Why? Because for the ideal Rankine cycle, we always start off as a compressed liquid, or uh, a saturated liquid, rather. So, I'm just going to go to my 10 kilopascals in the um, steam tables. I got this little uh, booklet that just has all the property tables, rather. And um, I'm going to find my saturation temperature there because since it's a saturated liquid the temperature is the saturation temperature now what would this graph look like i'm gonna draw um let's do a let's do a ts diagram so i know that my dome is going to be something like this i'm operating between two pressures a low pressure and a high pressure right so it's gonna have something like this now what's my pressure, the higher pressure gonna be? Four megapascals, right? So this is the four MPa constant pressure line, and this is my 10 kPa constant pressure line. Cool. Now I know my point one is right here. That's where it always starts out for the ideal Rankine cycle, right? Cool. We assume that it starts off as a saturated liquid. It's an isentropic compression. So isentropic means that there's no change in S, and because it's being compressed, that heat is gonna go, um, sorry, the temperature is gonna go up. So I'm gonna have something like this, right? Cool. This point right here is my T2. Now I want us to realize something. The V is almost constant here. Um, liquids are incompressible, right? So because I'm at such a small point with that, um, at point one, my V is basically gonna be the same at point one and point two. So you can sort of take that to be the same, and I probably should have drawn this a little bit lower, but um, that's fine, I'll continue the, the properties down there. Now, we're gonna go up 
come out somewhere probably superheated and then come back and they've told us that it's gonna be um they said the mass fraction right they wouldn't ask for the quality if it wasn't a or they might but most likely it's gonna end up being a saturated uh, liquid vapor mixture because there's quality involved so they said um, it condenses at the turbine exit so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and find I'll go ahead and find my um, I'll find my T1 obviously, and I'll find S, S1, specific entropy at point one. I'll find my S3. Um, hmm. What else can I find? I can find my S3 with these, um, with the superheated tables. And okay, let's go ahead and see what, as, as, as I go on, you'll see the thought process that I have. So I'm gonna go to my 10 kilopascals here, and I'm gonna find the saturation temperature for that, for saturated water, right? Because it's water that we're using. So the temperature is 45.81. Um, I mean, we don't really need this, but let me just go ahead and put it. 45.81 degrees Celsius. And my S1 is just gonna simply be my SF, right? Because it's a saturated liquid, uh, saturated liquid at point one. Cool. So, my saturated liquid is gonna be SF at point one, which is 10 kilopascals. So that's gonna be 0 0.6492. Um, and that's kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, right? Cool. Now, um, hmm. let me go ahead and find my S3. And I'm finding my S3 for a reason. Um, what I know is that S3 is equal to S4. Why? Because it's an isentropic expansion, right? So, S4, I can already determine by this. So I'm gonna go to my superheated tables and go to four megapascals and look for what S is at 500 degrees. And my S comes out to be 7.0922. Let me just double check that, yes. 7.0922. And again, that's kilojoules per kilogram. Kelvin, sorry I'm writing so close to the graph. I didn't realize that it would be that close. But that's the same thing, right? Cool. Now, I have my S4, I have my S3, I have my uh, S1. Um, did I even need my S1? We'll find out if I needed my S1. But basically, now, I have 10 kilopascals here. I know that this is 10 kilopascals. What I can do now, right? So I know that this is superheated, right? Because like, I, I just found it in the superheated table. And uh, if you wanna double check me, you can go to the, check the saturation um, temperature at four megapascals. It's gonna definitely be lower than this. So, I know that this comes straight down, and I should probably be drawing arrows just to show the direction of uh, like sequence. And then this is gonna be my point four. So I know that my, my, my quality is probably gonna be somewhere near one, maybe point eight and higher just based on the graph. This graph isn't to scale, obviously, but just based on the graph, my quality is probably gonna be somewhere around, like, close to one. Cool. Now what I can do is find my SF and SG at this point in time and sort of use that quality equation to find the quality. So I know that S is equal to SF plus X SFG. Cool. My S at 10 kilopascals is at 7.0922. My SF has to be SF at 10 kilopascals, which is, isn't that that? Yes, that actually is this. Why is it this? Because this is SF, literally. Like, like I found, like it, yes, it is S1, but S1 is simply SF at 10 kilopascals, and conveniently, I'm using SF at 10 kilopascals to find my uh, quality here. We don't know the quality, right? But my SFG, I can get from the graph. So my SFG is that SFG at 10 kilopascals, which is uh, 7.4996. Now, solving for X, I can get that X is equal to, let me grab my calculator really quick. S is equal to, 7.0922 minus 0 0.6492. That value divided by 
nine six. X has to be equal to zero point eight five nine. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. X is equal to zero point eight five nine. It's like one two one one two or something. Yeah, but I think you can leave it at this. Or if you want to include that one, you can. So that's your quality, okay? So I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Just try and work with what they give you. See what you can sort of find, manipulate, and everything, and that's what you'll end up getting. So if anything wasn't clear, please feel free to ask comments or uh, ask questions in the comment section. Um, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and let's keep learning thermal. Thank you.